All right, guys. Well, I've had some time to plug in devices such as my phone, access point, my laptop. I've been playing with the router and the switch for a while now. One of my main things I really wanted to do was learn firewall rules. So when you set up a guest network, they can go out and that's it. They won't snoop on the network, meaning being able to see a device like this on the main network or a printer or stuff like that, just in case when you guys put these into the business networks, you want to make a guest network or another, maybe a accounting network where they're only allowed to go out to the internet or something like that, prime examples. In today's video, I'm going to show you that, how to create that rule, and I'm going to show you it working. And then I'm going to show you one of the things that I really wanted and I talked about in the last video was DHCP options where you want to set a scope. Now, when I set up a network, I don't leave it as a wide open scope from the start to finish. I create a small portion that's DHCP for the group and I adjust it from start to finish. In the new Alta Labs routers, it's a little bit strange how they did that. But, I mean, everybody has their own way of doing networks and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, when I set up networks, I usually set up from 100 to 199 giving you 100 addresses to do DHCP for devices. Now, depending on how big the scope needs to be, I'll set it from like maybe 50 to 199 to give it more scopes or addresses and stuff. But today's video, I'm just going to do 100 and show you guys how to do that. And the reason why I do that is because some stuff at the very top, like printers, you set up printers with a static IP address, they don't want to get a different address. You want to keep them at a static IP address and you want to keep them in a range where nothing else is going to be so that way if the printer's off, something else gets that device and then it just stops working. Things like that happen, trust me. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the router here. I'm already logged into my router, it's working great. Um, I haven't added it to the WAN network because I wanna try a couple more things and I think they might have some more beta firmwares or something like that coming out soon here to add some more features because WireGuard, wink, wink, hint, hint, is a very good VPN service to put on our um, devices and it's very, very uh, useful. So hopefully that's next on their list of things to do. But for now, let's jump in. I'll show you the DHCP here first. So we're at the main page. If we click settings, actually not settings, it's network, my bad. And then what we have to do is click on the router. In here, I have two, um, virtual networks. I have the main one and then the secondary one. For the first one, I'm just going to show you how to change that, which is by clicking on the little pencil. Right here, under reserved IP addresses, it'll say 100. So that's how many addresses we want. Pool size is how many IP addresses you want. So the, the reserved IP address starts at 100 and the pool size is how many you want. It took me a very long time to figure that out, I was playing with it, and I was going back and forth with Ultra Labs, and then I got a message saying, oh, you do it like this. Usually it's different than that. You just have, you just say, I want to start from here to here. Pretty easy. But once I figured that out, got it in there, it works great. The next thing, we want to do a firewall rule. Now I have a phone on here, Let's look and see what the IP of this phone is. And we should see it in the device list here. Uh, my phone is right here. So we should see 192.168.25.106. It is on the main network and I have my laptop on the guest network. So we take this IP address, I can copy it, put it in my browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my rule that I made. Before I do that though, I wanna show you Dale's website or YouTube channel specifically. I've been going back and forth with him on Instagram. We're going back and forth sharing ideas and playing with this router and doing little stuff. And I showed him a trick and then he showed me a trick. With the rule, it wasn't working in the beginning for me until we changed one thing. And I'll show you that in a second here. But the IP address of the phone here, we can go to devices. And it's at 192.168.25.106 because it's on the main LAN. If we ping that, ping 192.168.25.106, there's no response because I have a rule in there. I'm going to show you that rule and then I'll see if we can turn it off and then see if we can get back to it. The reason why we block this example idea or devices like say a phone or a printers on the guest network, we don't want people to see stuff. 
Maybe you have a server or a NAS device that we don't want the guest networks to do it. That would be a rain, main reason why we would make these kind of rules. So let's cancel this. I'll show you the rule here. So we go settings, firewall, and at the top here, we see my rule here. You can click on it. Now in the beginning, I was making this rule and it wasn't working. And then I messaged Dale and I said, why? Mine's not working. I don't know why it doesn't work. Maybe there's something wrong with the firmware. And he says, yeah, mine didn't work at the beginning either. Now, my rule was set to ex explicitly deny. But if we go back to my terminal rule, uh, window and this is set to that, I'm still being able to ping this phone right here. Now, when I see a rule and I say deny, that means it should stop, but it's not. So to get that to work, I'm going to cancel my ping. We have to actually set the um, icon in the rule here to drop, which means ignore. I don't, know, I don't Maybe there's a small bug there. I'm not too sure. But now if you go back to the terminal window here and try pinging it, it doesn't ping. So, I mean, the rule works. It's just Maybe there's a small bug between the buttons or something. I don't know. Maybe one means more than the other. I don't know. But maybe one of the guys at Alta Labs will message me in the window or down below and say, hey, um, we're fixing that. I don't know. Okay. Now, I'll go over the rule here. So I've made a rule. It's at the very top of the list because I think that's the way that the rules work. Down, right? Maybe they work the other way. I'm not too sure. So on my simple rule, I called it block guest to LAN, which means... My laptop's on the guest network, just so you know, and this is on the main LAN, again. So the source is the guest network, the destination is the private network, and I added all the protocols in there just because I was playing back and forth, adding them and removing them and stuff like that, just to see what kind of things work. So we can add the protocols, whichever ones we want. Zone in, I just kept it at LAN, and then the zone out, I just left it as, you just select any and then it puts a star there. I didn't put any other information in there, but I said, like I said in the beginning of this part, you have to push drop ignore and then that will work. Very, very easy once you've done and figured that out, but I'm sure things are going to start changing here in the future with these guys and they're going to start tweaking things a little bit here and there. So pretty simple. Um, I mean, the it's greening a lot of traction right now with this firewall. Things are starting to come along. They're starting to do more things. Um, it will get there. It just has to take time. I'm sure they're getting inundated with questions on features and stuff like that. So hopefully maybe the next update does the VPN. When you go to the firewall right now, um, you have to actually go to network and then alter routes to the router. We can move this and we click VPN. We only have IPsec. That's from one router to the other. I use WireGuard a lot for my phones and I hope, wink, wink, when they put that out, there will be a QR code that somebody can scan with their device or export the file real quickly to import another device. So simple video showing you guys how things work. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. And thanks to Dale, I'll put a link to his channel down below and I'm going to tag him in there. If you have questions, ask him too, because he's got one of these devices too. And uh, I'm going to go from there. So thanks very much for watching and let's all watch this uh, device evolve. Check you guys later.